Hi, everybody. Matt Bernier joined by DRF's National Handicapper Mike Watchmaker taking a look at this weekend's Weekend Warriors Saturday, June the 2nd. Two races from Penn National, one from Woodbine. Let's start off with the Penn Mile, arguably the main event of the entire Penn National meeting, Mike. It's a nice field of three-year-olds going a mile. You're going to go with Hawkish. I am going with Hawkish. I do want to note that Hawkish was also cross-centered in the Pennine Ridge at Belmont. Why there are two rich three-year-old turf stakes on the same day in the same geographical region, I, I can't figure out. But, you know, I, I think that once Hawkish's connections get a load of analyze its past performances and Catholic Boys past performances at the Pennine Ridge, they're going to go in this spot. And I hope they do because I think Hawkish is still going to be a very decent price on this spot because two starts back, he finished fourth behind Maraud and Therapist in the Palm Beach stakes at Gulfstream. Uh, and Hawkish was only making his second career start in that race. His, his maiden win was a good one. He beat some nice horses in that race, including Pat Day Pat Day, Day Mile winner, Funny Duck. Um, but Hawkish was up against it from a seasoning standpoint in the Palm Beach, and he was also up against it from a standpoint of pace. Uh, the pace was slow in that race. He was more compromised than Murad was. He was more compromised than Therapist was. He still made a very nice run and upper stretch before weakening late. He made his third start, Hawkish did, last time out in a Laos race at, at Aqueduct, and I thought he showed tremendous advancement in that race. First of all, he showed much improved positional early speed, and he just blew that field away, and he earned a 92 buyer figure that fits very much with these horses. I just think Hawkish is is more is a better horse now. He's got a, a bigger ceiling. I mean, Barad's already had seven starts. Therapist has already had five. Not to say that those horses ha can't improve. They have improved recently. They're both coming into the sub stakes wins. I just think Hawkish is a better horse now. And I think he has a bigger ceiling than these two horses. And I think he's going to be the biggest price of the three, too. Penn Miles race number nine on Saturday. Race number eight is the Pennsylvania Governor's Cup. You've got some salty turf sprinters in here. And you're interested in a price on the morning line. I am. I'm interested in Dubini in here. Now, Pure Sensation is definitely the horse to beat in this race. Pure Sensation had a nice year again last year. He won two turf sprint stakes at Parks, which is his favorite turf course, but he was also only beaten a little bit more than a length of the Breeders' Cup turf sprint. But I thought Pure Sensation, you know, looked vulnerable when he was beaten at two to five in the Lowell Streets of Gulfstream in his twenty eight in Gulfstream in his twenty eighteen debut. I think Dubini offers some value in here because if he's able to run back to his second two starts back in the Aqueduct Turf Sprint Championship. He's going to win this race. I don't care if Pure Sensation does show up because that was a huge performance. I mean, he was beaten less than a length by Rainbow Air, who came back and absolutely dominated the Gulfstream Park turf sprint with a 106 buyer figure. Uh, you know, I know that Dubini was 59 to 1 in this race, and I know that people might say, well, you know, it, it, it was a flukish performance. And well, maybe it was, but I, I'm taking the opposite view. He, he showed a lot of potential winning his first four career starts. And I just think he might be the real deal. And I know he's coming into this fresh first start in five months. I don't care. The barn's good with fresh horses. He's fired fresh, too. I think Dubini is a, is a price horse with a real chance to win this race. And the main event up at Woodbine Saturday is a real salty event as well. The Connaught Cup you can go a few different ways. A race that lacks much as far as pace is concerned. You're going to stay down toward the inside with the number two, Conquest Panthera. I am going with Conquest Panthera, and I completely agree, Matt. There's not a lot of pace in this race. And... One of the reasons why I'm, I'm going with Conquest Panther is that I think he's going to be able to establish establish good early striking position in this race. Uh, but Conquest Panther might be a little bit of a stable pet of mine. I mean, he was a weekend warrior pick of the elusive quality in his last start. That was opening weekend at Belmont. And I thought he ran well finishing second in that race at 5-1. to one. Uh, The winner was very good. Uh, the winner disputed the pace. Conquest Panther uh, rallied to be, I thought, definitely second best in the race. You know, this is a horse that I think he's finally focusing on what he really wants to do, uh, which is extended turf sprints. I mean, the elusive quality was a seven furlong race. This is a seven furlong race. He wanted to play the king last summer going seven furlongs on the Woodbine turf course. Uh, you know, I just think Conquest Panther is the right horse in here. Forge is the big question mark in here. You know, Forge has, is certainly fast enough to win this race. Uh, he's had four triple-digit buyer speed figures uh, from his U.S. starts. But the thing of it is, is that after every one of those, uh, after the first three of those uh, triple-digit buyer figures, he just fell off the map in his next start. I mean, he ran much slower. And I just don't know that he can put two, two good 
races together, and he is coming into this off a triple-digit buyer figure. You can find the entire Weekend Warrior right up over on DRF.com, National Handicapper, Daily Racing for Mike Watchmaker. Great stuff as always. We'll chat again soon. Thank you, Matt.